Well, I am so frustrated that this phone, if I answer one call while I have the video paused, all the sound disappears and I don't know why. I don't understand why that does that. Uh, anyway, you're not going to get to see the video where I had a ton of interruptions and I got a phone call and ended up having to pause the video and take the call or call back. And that was a fiasco. And so all the prayer and everything didn't get recorded because it was all dead silence. <sighs> I hate that stuff. I hate that it does that. But I don't know what to do. So I'm going to re-record this, but it's not going to have the same content that it had in that video, unfortunately. So we're just <laughs> we're just going to get into it, into the devotion this morning. It really aggravates me. It's so frustrated that it does that. Because there, there's no reason it should pick right back up. The Bluetooth is still on. Everything should still be working. But even without the Bluetooth, it still shuts off. Uh, anyway, I'm going to get off my soapbox. So the morning devotion is going to be out of Galatians 5.1. The liberty wherewith Christ hath made us free. So let's go there and let's read it. Now, again, like, well, like I did in the other video, this is a, a, one of those instances in the Bible, and there's a lot of them, where the actual thought is started in another chapter and carries over into this. And the running joke out there is the guy, I can't remember his name, you can look it up, the guy that has, um, uh, that was putting all the channel, or all the channel, all the chapter separations in here, was riding on the back of a horse and it was bouncing and his pen was marking in the wrong spot. And so it's kind of a running joke that people have about that, that he, he kept, the, the, the chapters were divided incorrectly. But whatever, we, we can always just go back and read it. So you have to go back to the previous chapter to get the thought of what he's talking about in that first verse. And that starts in verse 28. Now we, brethren, as Isaac was, are children of promise. But as he who was born, according to the flesh, then persecuted him who was born according to the Spirit, even so... It is now. And before anybody says anything, we'll put it in airplane mode. That cuts me off from my Wi-Fi. I live in a dead zone, so I don't get phone signal on here. So I have to have it connected. Because I already tried that a while back. But as he who was born according to the flesh, then perse persecuted him who was born according to the Spirit. Even so it is now. Nevertheless, what does the Scripture say? Cast out the bondwoman and her son. For the son of the bondwoman shall not be heir with the son of the free woman. The unbeliever does not inherit heaven like the believer does. There are people out there that believe, well, I'm a good person. Oh, well, even atheists are going to go. No. No. They're not co-heirs with us. We are co-heirs with Christ. They are not co-heirs with us. It says it right here. So then, brethren, we are not children of the bondwoman, but of the free. Now we get to go in the other chapter. Stand fast, therefore, in the liberty by which Christ has made us free, and do not be entangled again with a yoke of bondage. Indeed, I, Paul, say to you that if you become circumcised, Christ will profit you nothing. And I testify again to every man who becomes circumcised that he is a debtor to keep the law. Now, it's not talking about the physical act of circumcision, because back then that process was associated with following the laws of the Jews, because nobody else in the world got circumcised. It just wasn't a thing. Today we do it for health. It's different. So if you're circumcised like I am, it's not going to, it's not condemning you. He's talking about following the law because he talks about that in the very next verse. You have become estranged from Christ. You who attempt to be justified by law, you have fallen from grace. If you're attempting to be justified by the law, you've fallen from grace. You're estranged from Christ. And there's a lot of people doing that today. A lot of Christians trying to do that. It's funny because way back then, and they had the, the, the thing in Acts where they were trying to talk about, okay, what should the Gentiles be doing? Because some of the Pharisees who had converted were trying to get them back under the law. We have, they're doing, they're doing the same thing. They're literally telling Christians, well, you need to follow the, Jude, the Judaic law. And then you'll be perfect. And they're doing it. No, no, no. No, no, no. This, 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 we, we play no part in this from that angle. 
We do in Christ, but that's something completely different. They're trying to do this in the flesh. You can't fulfill the law in the flesh. You can't follow it. Even they can't do it. They're not sacrificing, so they're not fulfilling the law. You violate it in one point, you violate the whole thing. End of discussion. There's no debate here. What they're doing is incorrect. And he, Paul's talking about this clearly in verse 4. You've fallen from grace. For we, through the Spirit, eagerly wait for the hope of righteousness by faith. Notice he says we're waiting for righteousness, a hope of righteousness. We're not righteous yet. We have imputed righteousness. There's a day of redemption coming. For in Christ Jesus, neither circumcision nor uncircumcision avails anything but faith working through love. No matter what we're doing, it doesn't help us. It's faith working through love. You ran well. Who hindered you from obeying the truth? This persuasion does not come from him who calls you. A little leaving, leaving us the whole lump. So, what the world is trying to do if you're if you're trying to live under the law, you're making a mistake. Now, a lot of people will say, well, I just follow the Ten Commandments. Well, cool, but you're still not going to be able to fulfill that. That's a little leaving, leavening the whole lump. Now, what do we say? The commandments are perfect. The law is perfect. But we can't in the flesh fulfill it. It's a problem. Well, we should still live by those things. Right, but you don't do that with a thought process of this is earning me browning points with God. You don't do that with a process of thinking that this pleases God, because the Bible says only faith pleases God. So we live by faith. Now, if you're naturally doing those things that are in the commandments that you know are the wrong things to do and the right things to do, and you're doing that based on integrity, what's right and wrong? Well, that's wrong. I'm not going to do that. What's right? This is right. This is what I'm going to do. And you're not using that as an excuse to say I'm earning salvation. Well, then you're okay. What's in your heart on this? But if you're doing that because you think that makes you righteous, it doesn't. Because I can sit there and I can do the law perfectly and still not be righteous. Because it's something that's in the flesh. It's not going to benefit me. He said circumcised or uncircumcised. Under the law or not under the law, it's not going to help you. It is faith through love. It is Christ that helps us. It's because through him, we are these things. Now, in the first recording of this, I gave the... Uh, understanding when I go out there to that vine out there that Mustang grapevine and I cut those vines off that trunk those vines die the vine cannot produce anything of itself Jesus is the trunk he's the root and unless the vine is attached to the root he cannot produce anything you cannot produce fruit you cannot do the right thing you cannot be righteous unless you're attached to the source of that those branches can't produce their own nutrients. They need the trunk. They You don't bear fruit. The, the branch doesn't bear fruit. The tree bears fruit through the branch. Those vines don't bear fruit. It's the trunk that bears the fruit through the vine. Jesus, I don't bear fruit. Jesus bears fruit through me because I'm attached to him. So I can't do these things of myself. I need him to do them through me. And that's how the sanctification works. That's how justification works. That's how salvation works. I can't be saved or save myself. I need him to save me. And so when he does that, he produces the good works through me. I'm the conduit. I couldn't be saved until he saved me. Others get saved, not by me, but by him through me. When I give a word or visit or share gospel or whatever. So we have to understand that, that that we're not the ones that are able to do it. He does that through us. We, we, put, we don't do that thinking that we're doing something. We put that all in his hands. Lord, do this through me. Use me for this. Uh, I, make me to obey you and listen and do what you say. And to do things according to your will. Obedience. But we have liberty in this. Because we have liberty to go and to do. To go and to help. To go and to be a blessing. But we don't do it with the thought process of I'm going to be better than someone else in his eyes because I'm doing this. We're all going to be the same. This same liberty also allows us to go to him when we have a problem. To go to him when we have an issue. Let's read the devotion and you'll see what I mean. This liberty makes us free to heaven's charter, the Bible. 
Here is a choice passage, believer. When thou passest through the rivers, I will be with thee. You are free to that. Here is another. The mountains shall depart and the hills be removed, but my kindness shall not depart from thee. You are free to that. You are a welcome guest at the table of the promises. Scripture is a never-failing treasury filled with boundless stores of grace. It is the bank of heaven. You may draw from it as much as you please, without let or hindrance. Notice where we're drawing it from, the book. Come in faith, and you are welcome to all covenant blessings. There is not a promise in the world which shall be withheld. Oh, sorry, there is not a promise in the word which shall be withheld. We pray these promises back to him to remind us of them. In the depths of tribulations, let this freedom comfort you. Amidst waves of distress, let it cheer you. When sorrows surround thee, let it be thy solace. This is thy Father's love token. Thou art free to it at all times. Thou art also free to the throne of grace. It is the believer's privilege to have access at all times to his heavenly Father. Whatever our desires, our difficulties, our wants, we are at liberty to spread all before him. It matters not how much we may have sinned. We may ask and expect pardon. It signifies nothing how poor we are. We may plead his promise that he will provide all things needful. Notice what he's saying here. Pray the promises. Reminds you, not him. He already knows them. He wrote them. He gave them. It reminds us. We have permission to approach his throne at all times, in midnight's darkest hour, or in noontide's most burning heat. Exercise thy right, O believer, and live up to thy privilege. Thou art free to all that is treasured up in Christ, wisdom, righteousness, sanctification, and redemption. It matters not what thy need is, for there is fullness of supply in Christ, and it is there for thee. Oh, what a freedom is thine! Freedom from condemnation, freedom from the promises, freedom to the throne of grace, and at last freedom to enter heaven. Notice none of these are done by our will, but it's by his. It's by his action, not ours. So when we try to act a certain way, when we try to do things a certain way, when we try to, to follow some preconceived idea that this is going to make me better or a better person, we still fall short. Still a sinner. Nothing changes that. Except Christ. He changes that. He's the one that washes me of these things. He's the one that changes my mind on these things. He's the one that corrects my understanding on these things. I can't do it on my own. I try. But I'm going to fail. So when I try, I don't try thinking I'm achieving something. I try with the mindset of, I know this is the right thing to do. But I go to him to ask for guidance on how to do it. Because if I do it my way, it's going to fail. I do it his way, it's going to succeed. And so it is his that is imputed onto me. It is his that is imputed into me or done through me. I don't, pro I don't provide good works. He does them through me. Now, I know what's right and what's wrong. That's from him. And so I go out and that's what I do, what's right. I avoid what's wrong. That's from him. So that fruit wasn't for me, it was from him. He does this through us. At the same time, we have the ability to go to the throne. We have the freedom to go and to ask him for those things. We have the ability and the free access. That's why the veil was, was ripped from the top down. That was God ripping that veil, blocking off the Holy, the Holy of Holies, blocking off the throne room of God. He ripped it from the top down to signify we had access to him again. We had access to walk into the Holy of Holies. And that is because of Jesus Christ. In the, in the first recording of this, I read that poem from that Lubick uh, Germany church that was engraved on the walls as, a, as an example of going to him and, and asking him for these things. We are allowed to go ask him for help, to ask him for guidance, to ask him for providence, to ask him to fulfill his promises, to, to ask him for knowledge, wisdom, understanding. We're going to do that this morning. 
We have the ability to come and do that. We've got to get out of this mindset like the world is trying to teach us, to get out of this mindset that we think we're unworthy to approach the Lord. That's what the Catholics believe. That's why they pray to the saints. We're not worthy to go to Jesus. You're right. None, nobody is. But we still have access to that. We have that liberty in him. And so let us utilize that. Those saints can't hear your prayer. They can't make any intercession for you. Christ lives to intercede for us. So let us ask him. Let us use our liberty to do what we know is the right thing. Let's do that right now. Father, we come before you this morning in the name of Jesus Christ to give you praise, honor, and glory, to lift you up and sing praises unto your holy name. Father, thank you for this word and this devotion. Round two, we're back again because the first video didn't record and the prayer didn't record. So, Father, we're going to come before you again. Lord Jesus, we're coming to ask again for open eyes to see the truth, an open mind to know the truth, and an open heart to understand the truth. Not the world's truth, not our truth, but your truth. And your truth is contained within your word. Like this devotion says, we have liberty. Like this verse, Galatians 5, 1 says, we have liberty. Why do we constantly put ourselves back under bondage? Make us to understand this so that we don't do that again. Make us to understand your word and what you're trying to get across to us, the message you're trying to get across to us, so that we don't make this mistake again. Because we're so bad about that. We're so horrible about that. And make us to not condemn ourselves, which we're horrible about doing too, because that makes us, and I used to do this, because that makes us feel like we can't come to you and ask you. We have liberty in our Lord to come to the throne and to ask, to come to the throne and to lay our petitions down, to lay loved ones down that we're praying for, or people down that we're praying for. It, it, sometimes it, it's it's a real struggle to grasp some of the concepts that are in your Bible. And because of this perspective we have now in this age versus the other ages, and because of the world and the influence that we have, we misunderstand so much. Father, I ask in Jesus' name that you give us the proper understanding of this, your understanding of this, your knowledge of this, so that we may obey your word properly, so that we may follow after our Lord properly, so that we may do things your way, not our way. Because I mess it up all the time. But you are perfect. And so I'd rather do it your way. Because we know we have this liberty to come before you and to pray about these things. To bring these problems to you. To bring these issues that we have to you. So many people have been taught that you can't take these things to the Lord. You can't pray problems to the Lord. You tell us we can. And so I'm going to believe you. So, Lord, help us understand this. Help us grasp this from your perspective so that we may know the right way to do things, not the wrong way. Not the world's way, but your way. So that we may glorify you in the life we live, in the things that we do, and in our worship. So, Father, I thank you for your mercy and your grace and your great love, your free gift of salvation. This word and this understanding, and this devotion. And in Jesus Christ's name, we bless you, praise you, honor you, and glorify you. And in the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Guys, thank you for joining me for Morning Devotion. I apologize, because I completely forgot that the phone would do that. And so as soon as I got done, as soon as that call came in, I paused the video and, answered, and called him, called my dad back. And I should not have done it, because... I completely forgot that the phone would do that, and so it blocked out the whole other half of the video. So, that was my mistake. So I apologize for that. But we still got it done. But we've got to get out of this mindset of condemning ourselves, thinking that we're not worthy to go and to pray to the Lord about this stuff, because that hinders us from advancing. 
It doesn't stop the Lord. The Lord's still going to do what he's going to do. He's more powerful than, than all of the sum of his, all his creation. But we can hold ourselves back from growing. So let us not do that. Let us read the word and understand what it says. Go back into Galatians 4 and 5. Read what it says. Think about it. Consider it based from this perspective and see what he shows you and reveals to you about that. That you are free to go to him and to take your problems to him. To pour out what you need to him, your requests to him. Make your requests known. And as a believer, we will do it according to his will, because as a believer, we understand what his will is to a greater or lesser degree. And so when we ask, we ask according to his will. Unbelievers don't. They ask for selfish things, things that are going to benefit them and no one else. So they can use it for selfish ambition. The Bible talks about that. But we, in the faith, understand a little differently. And so when we go ask, it's because it's something according to his will, usually on the behalf of, an, of another. So let us do that. I love you all very much. I bless you all in Jesus' name. And I'll see you in the next video.